Hello guys and welcome to another calculus video. In this video we are going to be solving this very cool Putnam integral problem from I believe it's eight, 1989. Um, it's a really interesting one because we're doing, uh, there's not much actually integration that we're going to be doing, but we're uh, dealing with this interesting sequence mu of n and this odd function right here. Um, some, so essentially we're talking about this function uh, which we know is bounded from above by f of x is less than or equal to, or sorry, absolute value of f of x is less than or equal to e to the negative square root x for x greater than zero, so that we know that this integral is always going to converge. And we're dealing with this series right here, or sorry, not series, this sequence right here. So the first thing we're told to do in this problem, part one of the problem, is just to find an expression for the sequence in terms of mu zero. So let's go ahead and do that right now. So for, first off, we're defining mu zero as just going to be the integral from zero to infinity of f of x dx. And we don't know what this is because we don't have an explicit formula for f of x. So we're just going to leave it as that. Next, we are going to uh, go ahead and try to get an expression for mu of n plus one. So let's just look at mu of n real quick. I'm sorry that I'm not very good at drawing mu's. Um, I haven't really taken physics yet, so I haven't had to deal with too many Greek letters. Now, something that we immediately notice here is we are given a direct formula for f of x, f prime of x, in terms of f of x. It's um, negative 3 f of x plus 6 f of 2x. So that means if we're able to get f of x on the inside here, then we, or f prime of x on the inside here, then we can get an expression in terms of um, mu of n, right? So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to do integration by parts, because when I integrate x to the n, I'm going to end up with something that's going to give me um, something in terms of mu of n plus 1. And when I differentiate f of x, I can just turn it back into f of x again. So let's go ahead and do that. We have mu n equals the integral from 0 to infinity. Or sorry, first we need to do our integrating part. So it's going to be x to the n plus 1, f of x, over n plus 1, evaluated at infinity and at 0. Since we know that f of x decays rapidly, um, similar to e to the negative square root x, we know that this is just going to disappear at 0. And at 0, since we have x to the n plus 1, this is also going to disappear. And we're subtracting the integral from 0 to infinity of x to the n plus 1 over n plus 1 times negative 3 f of x plus 6 f of 2x dx. So once we simplify this, we get that mu n equals the integral from 0 to infinity. I'll put this 1 over n plus 1 outside, and we just have 3, or sorry, uh, we have x to the n plus 1 times 3 f of x minus 6 f of 2x dx. So clearly this first part is just going to be mu of n plus 1. So we have mu n equals 1 over n plus 1, or sorry, 3 we should put right here, 3 um, mu n plus 1, and then we're going to be subtracting 6 over n plus 1 times the integral from 0 to infinity of x to the n plus 1 times f of 2x dx. And in order to evaluate this, this is just simple, we're going to set u equal to 2x. So we're just going to end up having in here, um, I'm just going to replace everywhere 2x with u, so we're going to end up having du over 2 right, d over 2, f of u, and x to the n plus, or u, uh, I screwed. so uh, we're going to end up dividing by 2 to the n plus 1 as well, so we're subtracting 6 over n plus 1, time, uh, on, on the bottom here we have 2, we're going to have 2 to the n plus 2, and we can just rewrite that as 2 to the n plus 1 and make this a 3 on top. This just comes from that substitution and that x to the n plus 1 being converted to u over 2 to the n plus 1. And we have mu n plus 1. Now I'm going to try and isolate mu n plus 1 so that we can get a nice little recurrence relation here. So we have mu of n equals 3 over n plus 1 times 1 minus 1 over 
2 to the n plus 1 times mu n plus 1, or mu n plus 1 equals mu n over 3 times n plus 1 times 1 over 1 minus 1 over 2n plus 1, or 2 to the n plus 1. So we'll just reorganize that and put 2n plus 1 on the top. And on the bottom, we're going to have 2 to the n plus 1 minus 1. Very nice. So now what we're going to have to do is define um, an exact formula for mu n plus 1 depending on mu 0. And this actually seems a little bit um, difficult based on what we have here. It's a very complicated expression. But actually, since we have this simple recurrence, it's not very difficult to do. So I'm going to show you how we're going to do that. So when we start with mu 0, it's just going to be mu 0, right? When we want to solve mu and mu 1, we're just going to multiply by all this stuff. So we're going to multiply um, mu 0 times 1 third times um, 1 times 2 over 1. And then when we solve for mu 2, we're going to do the same exact thing. We're going to take mu 1, which is just equal to mu 0 times 1 third times 1 times 2 over 1. And then we're going to multiply by all this again, except now n equals 1. So essentially, we're just going to end up multiplying all the previous terms together. So let's come up with an explicit formula for mu n plus 1. Mu n plus 1, we're going to take this formula, and then we're going to go ahead and make it an infinite product. So, or not an infinite product, sorry, a finite product. So we're going to just take this product right here. And we're going to take the product from n equals 1, or sorry, I can't use n here from k equals 1 to n plus 1. No, just up to n. Because the last term we're including is the term with n. And then we're just going to copy this out exactly, except with k instead of n. So that's going to be k plus 1. I cannot draw a plus 1 today. Uh, k plus 1 times 2 to the k plus 1 over 3 times 2 to the k plus 1 minus 1. Let's just go ahead and check, and of course we're multiplying by mu 0 on the outside here. Let's just go ahead and check that this works. Um, if we go ahead and plug in, solve for mu 1, so we get mu 1 equals the product from k equals 1 to 1, which is just going to be the first term. We're just going to plug in k equals 1. Oh, okay, so it appears I have made a mistake when I'm doing this product. I should have shifted it over a little bit. So we're going to start at k equals 0 and go to n minus 1, and that should make everything work out. So let's go ahead and check. We're going to have mu 0 times this little product, which is going to be the product of 1 times 2 to the 1 over 2 minus 1 times 1 third. So that checks out. And this means that this is our explicit expression for mu n plus 1. Now there's one thing that I want to point out here, and that's that there are a few things that we can simplify in this infinite product. Because, an inf because of the properties of an infinite product, we can rewrite it as a product of a product. Sorry, it's not an infinite product. I keep saying that. It's a finite product. We can rewrite this as the product from k equals 0 to n minus 1 of 1 third times the product from k equals 0 to n minus 1 of k plus 1 times the product from k equals 0 to n minus 1 of 2 to the k plus 1 over 2 to the k plus 1 minus 1. So these first two products are really easy to evaluate. In this one, since we have n terms, we can just say that mu n plus 1 is going to equal 1 over 3 to the n. Then this one is just an expression uh, for n factorial times n factorial. And this one is just going to, we're just going to leave it as a product for now. And this is a much easier to use expression for mu n plus 1. Oh, I'm, I'm sorry, I just realized I screwed up again. This, all of this is actually just an explicit formula for uh, mu n, not for mu n plus 1. Because if we plug in n equals 1 everywhere, then that is going to give us our expression for uh, mu 1. So that is what I meant to uh, put in there. So yeah, so we have, um, so this is our expression for mu n, 
which is perfect. And now we are going to move on to the next part of the problem. So I'm going to go ahead and copy everything down. All right, so the next part of the problem uh, is actually proving that the sequence of mu n always converges and that the limit is only 0 if mu 0 equals 0. Uh, again, sorry, I forgot the mu 0 right here. So it wants us to prove that the sequence n factorial over, or sorry, um, 3 to the n over n factorial times mu n um, converges as we take n to be infinity. And that's actually relatively straightforward to do because we already simplified mu n into this right here. So we can just go ahead and cancel. So this is equal to the product from k equals 0 to n minus 1 of 2 to the k plus 1 over 2 to the k plus 1 minus 1 times mu 0. And if we go ahead and take the limit as n goes to infinity, we're going to end up with the product from k equals 0 to infinity of 2 to the k plus 1 over 2 to the k plus 1 minus 1 mu 0. So we have to prove that this converges. Now, me personally, I've never worked with infinite products before, aside from just using them to solve weird integrals. So I actually don't know any convergence tests or whatever, but uh, the first thing I thought to do was just take the natural log and then prove that the series itself converges, and it turns out that is actually a very easy thing to do. So that's what we're going to do. We're going to prove that the limit of the natural log converges and therefore show that the limit itself does also converge. So when we take the natural log, uh, all of this is limit as n goes to infinity, of course. We're going to end up with the sum from k equals 0 to infinity of the natural log of 2k plus 1 over 2k plus 1 minus 1 all times uh, plus natural log of mu 0, of course. And of course, in this case, if mu 0 were to be 0, then we would know that the sequence converges because every term would be 0 no matter what. So we don't have to worry about that at all. Now let's go ahead and solve, uh, prove that this converges right here. I'm going to use the limit comparison test. So one thing that we know is that this natural log right here equals a negative natural log of of 1 minus 1 over 2 to the k plus 1. And one important thing to know using power series is that as, uh, as x goes to infinity, ln of 1 minus 1 over x acts like 1 over x. So the way I'm going to leverage this is that um, since I know that this acts sort of like uh, 1 over 2 to the k plus 1, I'm going to compare it with the sum of 1 over 2 to the k plus 1, which we know converges just by uh, geometric series. So let's go ahead and do that. So we're going to take the limit as n goes to infinity of natural log of 2 to the k plus 2 to the n plus 1 over 2 to the n plus 1 minus 1 um, over 1 over 2 to the n plus 1. And I am positing that this is going to uh, converge to, I think it converges to 1, but all we require is that this is greater than 0 and less than infinity, and we will show that this is the case. So as n goes to infinity, we're going to have natural log of 1 on the top, and we're just going to have 0 on the bottom, so it's 0 over 0 situation, so we can use the hospital's rule. Now, before we use the hospital's rule in order to make it easier, I'm just going to separate this into natural log of 2 to the k plus 1 minus natural log of 2 to the k plus 1 minus 1. Again, I don't know why I keep putting n's and k's in here because they should all be n's. So we're going to use the hospital's rule right here, and we're going to get limit as n goes to infinity of natural log. Or actually, we don't need the natural log anymore. This is just going to be ln2 and we're going to be subtracting ln2 times 2 to the n plus 1 over 2 to the n plus 1 minus 1 all over negative ln2 2 to the uh, 1 minus n. So if we go ahead and factor out that ln2 and cancel it on the top and bottom, and then let's just go ahead and put everything on the top with a common denominator. So we have 2 to the n plus 1 minus 1 over 2 to the n plus 1 minus 1. 
and then you can see that this is going to cancel with this. And overall, we're going to have limit as n goes to infinity of negative 1 over, actually, that negative 1 is going to disappear with that negative sign, uh, 2 to the n plus 1 minus 1 times 2 to the 1 minus n, or sorry, negative 1 minus n. And so on the bottom, uh, this part's not going to matter, and these are just going to cancel perfectly with, the, with each other, and we're just going to get 1. So that's a great way to figure out if a series converges. Uh, if you have that natural log in there, just use the power series asymptotic expansion, and that will let you kind of see what it's going to look like in the limit, and then you can use the limit comparison test to show that it converges. So we just showed that that sequence always converges, and the last step is we have to show that it only goes to 0 if mu 0 equals 0. So obviously if mu 0, zero equals 0, that whole sequence is going to be 0. The harder part to show is that um, if mu 0 mu zero isn't zero, it's not going to go to zero. So the easiest way to do that is we know that mu n plus one, or yeah, um, mu n plus one is going to be, what do we say? Or actually we're talking about the series um, three to the n over n factorial mu n, right? It's the product from k equals 0 to n minus 1 of 2 to the k plus 1 over 2 to the k plus 1 minus 1. So mu 3 to the n plus 1 over n plus 1 factorial mu n plus 1 over 3 to the n over n factorial mu n is just the ratio of each term, right? We know that this is going to just be one of these terms right here, so it's just going to be uh, 2 to the n plus 1 over 2 to the n plus 1 minus 1. Pretty straightforward. And something that we can state here is that this is always greater than or equal to 1. That's relatively easy to see because um, the, the top is greater than the bottom and it's always positive. And so this just tells us that our sequence is monotone increasing, which means that absolute value mu n plus 1 is greater than or equal to absolute value mu n for all n, which means that this is never going to go to zero. It's only going to get further and further away from zero, though we know that really it's going to approach a limit as n goes to infinity. So this is a really cool problem, I think, because it brings in a lot of different um, sort of weird aspects of calculus that you don't usually go into, and it combines them with integration and other fun little tricks. There's no real clever tricks that you have to know in order to evaluate and solve this problem, but I just really like the way that it uh, brings in a, a lot of different uh, topics in calculus. So I hope you guys all enjoyed the video a lot. Uh, I hope to see you next time uh, when I make a video. And yeah, hope you enjoyed. See you next time.